Number six then, inverses of functions for four marks. I haven't asked anything about inverses for a long time. It's about time they did, so that's quite good it's appeared here. f and g are functions whose inverses exist. And if it gives you this for f of g for three marks, it wants the inverse function. It's actually quite easy just to see the inverse to that straight away. It's going to be take away 5 divided by 3. Whatever you start with will be take away 5 divided by 3, and that's the answer. But for three marks, I don't suppose you could just pop that down, so we'll just set it out this way. Well, the answer would be 3x plus 5. So if you rearrange that, and I'm really just setting all of this out to try and justify three marks, that means 3x would be y minus 5, and then x would be y minus 5 upon 3. Because that says if you feed the answer in, how do you get the original number back out? That's what the inverse function is. So strictly speaking, that function says f acting on, well this is the inverse function, it acts on the answer, so you put in the answer and you get this, but a letter's just a letter, so you can use any letter you like, so we'll just say the inverse function of this is x minus 5 upon 3. Quite often you just jump straight to that. But using the letter y, strictly speaking, that is the inverse function because it operates on the answer to give you back the original number. But once you've got it, you can use any letter you like. And this last question is really just a statement of the obvious for one mark. If g of 2 is 7, what's the value of the inverse of g acting on 7? Well, it's simple. If you start with 2, g takes you to 7. So the inverse function is the one that takes you back again. So the inverse function acting on 7 should be 2.